Welcome back everyone. This is gonna be another one of the application videos where I go through the entire application process to every single medical school in the country. Um, as you know, I'll be applying to pretty much everywhere. I'm sure you guys are looking around the country as well. Some of you might be looking at moving interstate possibly um, to make sure you've got the best possible chance. Others might not have as many options like I did last year. Uh, hopefully, if you're looking at Deakin, then today we're going to be looking at Deakin University. Their campus out in Warren Ponds in Geelong, in Victoria, is where the medical program is run. Deakin is a GEMSAS school, so what I'm going to do now is I've gone through, I think, a couple of GEMSAS schools. I've done Unimelb, for example, uh, and Griffith as well. And realistically, pretty much all of the medical schools that run through GEMSAS, which is almost all of them, they all pretty much use the exact same application process. So I'm not going to repeat the, the same elements that are covered in that. I might just refer you to the Unimelb one, or realistically, you could also look at the GEMSAS guide. It kind of segments it and lays out all of the generic GEMSAS processes in the first few pages. It'll be linked below. That's probably the best place to go to get a general sense of what it is. Anything that is school specific is then broken down into another section. But this is what this video series is for as well, is kind of really clarifying what all that means with some examples and hopefully a decent enough explanation as well. So today what we're going to do is look more so at what are the distinguishing features of the Deakin course, specifically in terms of its entry, the places, um, and of course it's bonus program as well. So it'll be a little bit shorter and uh, if there's any confusions or anything, check out the Unimelb one or check out the Gems Asker. As always, I always put a disclaimer, I'm not an expert with this stuff. I am not involved in the actual admissions program for any of these unis. So I do this based on my own research. I may get things wrong. So feel free to fact check me and uh, check it in the comments. If you do have questions, leave me a comment. But if it's specific about some very, very specific uh, say degree that you've done or some exceptions to the rules and you're wanting to get clarification, you're best off approaching the uni or the medical school itself or approaching GEMSAS and asking for clarification if that's the case, because I probably won't be a huge amount of help there. So the first thing is we're gonna break it down again. We're gonna look at place types first and then we'll kind of go through the minimum requirements. Then we'll also go through the bonus program. That's probably what most people are looking at this one for. So uh, place types first, there are this is all based on the 2022 information because obviously the 2023 guide has not been released yet. It'll come out later this year. 2022 entry for Deakin had a total of 138 places. There were 88 CSP places that were non-bonded. Uh, and then there were also 35 bonded medical places, which are still CSP. They're still run through the, the HEX fee or the HEX help loan system. Um, but they are, we know, bonded to rural and regional communities mostly, but really it says bonded to practice in any area where there is a shortage of healthcare workforce. And then finally, there was 15 international places available as well. You'll notice there was no full fee places at Deakin. They only have CSP or CSP bonded or the 15 international. They are full fee places, but there's no domestic full fee. In terms, so in terms of the minimum requirements for Deakin, um, they have a 5.0 minimum GPA hurdle. Uh, Obviously, GPA is still used in selection. The minimum requirements are just the minimums that you need in order to be eligible to apply. So a minimum of 5.0. Uh, this has to come from a, an eligible degree, which I might go through in a bit more detail in a moment. The GPA is calculated using the GEMSAS calculation. So I went through that in the Unimelb one, and you can also check it out in the GEMSAS guide. I think they actually have an application page as well on their website that actually shows how the weighted uh, GPA is calculated. In terms of 2020, there were special adjustments made for 2020 study at Deakin. They pretty much scrapped 2020 study uh, altogether. It's not included in the GPA. Again, now because we're not in the 2022 entry cycle, um, where 2020 falls in people's degrees is going to vary. So it really, it would be way too tedious for me to go through every single iteration of oh, what if it was your first year, what if it was your second, what if it was your third year of your degree. Um, so again, I'd probably refer you to the Deakin Uni website. I'll link specifically, they have a GPA adjustment page and they have lots of worked examples where they explain exactly how to treat it if you're unsure. At Deakin, an honours year can be counted uh, in the GPA calculation. It says that it may be considered and counted, so we can't, that's a bit weird wording, but I don't know whether or not they actually definitely do or if they just consider it and they may include it. What that'll mean is the honours year will count as the final year and then the two years prior to that will count as your final minus two and final minus one years. The other thing is in terms of graduate studies. So uh, graduate certificates, 
graduate diplomas, uh, masters by coursework, not by research. Um, these can all count as well, but they must be completed by the 31st of July, 2022. Or if you're looking at, if you're watching this in a later application year, assuming the rules haven't changed, then it'd probably be by July 31st in the year of application is a more broader way to say it. But for those of you looking for 2023 entry, applying this year, if you've done one of those, as long as it's gonna be completed by the end of July this year, then it can be included as your key degree for GPA calculation. Some other special cases, so two year bachelor's degrees are not recognized. It needs to be three years full-time equivalent. Um, if you've done a three year degree in an accelerated program and finished it in less than three years, but it is the equivalent of a three year degree, has the same number of credit points and so on, and you've just overloaded, that is still gonna be considered as well. So it doesn't have to be completed in three years, but it has to be a three year degree. They still use the 10 year rule for currency. So it needs to be completed uh, within 10 years of the expected start date of the program. Then in terms of minimum requirements for GAMSAT, uh, going back to minimum requirements. So you need the classic minimum of 50 in all three sections and a minimum 50 overall. This is just to be eligible. That is not necessarily a competitive score given that D can have a pretty small intake, they, they have relatively high cutoffs most years, excluding maybe some special rural programs and things like that. And then finally, if you're an international applicant, uh, same as with Uni Melbourne, most GEMSAT schools, you can use a GAMSAT score and the same rulings apply of the minimum 50s. Otherwise, you can also use an MCAT score. And in that case, the minimum requirement is a 125 in all sections. So in terms of the adjustments and bonuses program, again, for some reason, every medical school has their own unique little process that they kind of focus on and Deacon focuses on their bonus program, which is a really, really good one for people looking to bump up GPAs like myself. Um, so if we break it down, there are, there's five key categories that give bonuses and these are bonuses as calculated as a percentage on your com your combined GPA and GAMSAT score, right? So if you take, and I'll put it on screen, if you take your GPA divided by seven, and then you take your GAMSAT as a fraction of 100, add those two together, this is like the classic combo score. This is gonna be used as your selection rank, um, but if you're eligible for any of these bonuses, you can then get a percentage bonus calculated on that combined combo score, right? It should be a number somewhere between one and two in most cases. So there are five different categories. The first one is financial disadvantage. Um, this one attracts a 2% bonus. Uh, the way that you can prove this, again, I would recommend consulting both the Deacon website and the GEMSAS guide. They, they specify it. I think the Deacon one goes into a little bit more detail. Uh, but it basically says you need to have been, for example, in receipt of Centrelink benefits, so youth allowance or ab study, these kind of things, or other forms of government pension during the study in your key degree. That's the main thing. It can't be after your key degree. It has to show that you've had financial disadvantage during the degree in which you're calculating your GPA from. So if you've got uh, the documentation to support that, so this could be things like uh, taxation summaries, it can be payment receipts of every payment that was made, uh, bank transactions can be used as confirmation, but I don't know if that is considered a certified document. Um, again, just check the list for the full details because there's lots of different pensions and therefore lots of different documents that can be used as proof. You can't simply just say that you're in receipt. The other thing is you have to have been in receipt of that benefit for at least 12 months consecutively. So it can't have been less than that. The second one then, prior clinical experience. So this one attracts a 4% increase. And if you've had financial advantage, you can also add other percentage bonuses as well on top. So if you've worked as a registered health professional in Australia for at least one year full-time equivalent, full-time equivalent is seen as 36 hours per week. Uh, and this includes uh, things like nurses, well, not a doctor, obviously, or else why would you go on into medical school? But if you've been a, a nurse, uh, allied health professional, I believe as well, but there are certain types. So speech pathologists and uh, diet dietitians are included in this list and you get a 4% bonus on top if you can prove that you've held employment in one of those professions previously. The way that you prove that is you can do it through your group certificate um, or your kind of tax summary or your PAYG summary at tax time from your employer that shows your proof of employment for the one year. Um, and I think they say as well that you can't use like contract work and stuff like that. So if you, if you did uh, a 12 month contract, I believe that's not counted. They claim that 
they don't know if the contract was fulfilled or not. So even if you sign the contract to do the contracted work, they don't know if it was fulfilled. So double check the details on that. I would say the PAYG summary um, and uh, kind of ATO information is probably the best way to go about it. The third one is work experience. So this is broader work experience. So this attracts a 2% bonus. If you've been employed for two years prior to application, then you can also claim this as well. You need to have been employed full-time, I should say, for two years. And it needs to have been over a four-year period. So it doesn't have to be two years consecutively, but two years cumulatively within a four-year period. Or it could be two years consecutively within any period prior to application. Again, same thing. You prove it by PAYG summaries and that kind of thing. Then the fourth one is if you're a Deacon graduate, uh, then this attracts a 4% bonus. So another pretty big boost. You have to have either completed a degree from Deakin or be in the process of completing it if you're in your final year um, in order to be eligible. And you have to have been completing that study for at least two years full-time equivalent. So if you've done a transfer in the final year, then it won't count basically. You need to have done at least two years at Deakin and it needs to be completed at Deakin. As well as that, it needs to be full-time equivalent. It can't be, part if you're doing it part-time, that also doesn't count. Finally is rural. This is the biggest one, right? But there's very specific boundaries on it. So there's a 4% and an 8% category. If you live in an RA2 area, so RA1 is basically like metropolitan regions and you can, I'll put the link, you can kind of search your postcode and check out where you kind of fall. Even RA2 is a fair way out of a metropolitan city in Australia. Um, if you've lived in either an RA2 region in Australia or if you've lived in Greater Geelong, you're eligible as a rural applicant to get 4% bonus. If you've lived even more remotely in an RA3 to RA5, then you're eligible for an 8% bonus, which is absolutely gigantic. When I say eligible, it means that you have to have met the same criteria that GEMSAS requires for the standard rural applicant, right? So how does the bonuses actually work, right? So what I'll do is I'll use my scores as an example calculation, right? And show you how the bonuses work. So I'll be applying to Deakin. So the two, I can only apply to two of the uh, five categories. So I'll be looking at financial disadvantage, um, which is 2%, and also be using the uh, work experience. Although I need to probably contact them and check because I've been self-employed under my own business. So I don't really have uh, an employment contract. And I also don't have like, PAYG summaries from an employer, I have taxation information. So I'm gonna check that with them. But let's assume that I get the 2% for work experience and the 2% for financial disadvantage. I'll do it on my phone actually, because I haven't even done the calculations prior. So my weighted GPA using GEMSAS calculation is 5.84. So if I do that 5.84 divided by seven, and it gives me 0.834, right? My GAMSAT score, Deacon used the weighted overall GAMSAT. So obviously mine was an 84, which is gonna help boost it up a lot. I divide that by 100, that is 0.84, right? And I add on the 0.84 to that number and I end up with 1.674, right? Which is generally speaking a relatively, it's kind of on the border around about the average or well now with the numbers going up, it's probably down on the, the lower end. But what you've got to be mindful of is with Deakin, lots of people applying to Deakin are applying because of that bonus scheme, right? So now what we'll do is apply the bonus and see where it lands me. So if it's a 4% increase, I effectively times by 1.04. If it was a 10% increase, I'd times by 1.1, right? So you're gaining that percentage. So if I times that by 1.04, then I end up with a 1.741, right? Just huge, right? It's like a, what is a 0.07, jump in the final combo score and that puts me well above what i had in my uni melb application last year whether or not 1.74 is as impressive as it would be at another uni um, remains to be seen because lots of people will be doing the same calculation so i think keep that in mind if i look at that i'd go 1.74 that would be a shoe in in most gemsas schools assuming there were no bonus schemes on its own but i've applied the bonus to it and lots of other people are going to be applying bonuses. And realistically, 4% is not the biggest um, use of that bonus system. There are gonna be applicants that you know might have 12% or so on, right? Which are gonna, and probably have higher scores than mine overall. So I have to keep that in mind, that there could be people pushing onto 1.8s and stuff as well. And with such a small intake with only 88 CSPs, um, it starts to make it pretty competitive. So keep that in mind. But 
that is how we apply the bonus scheme. Then finally, just in terms of different processes or different application streams, there's also the rural applicant scheme. So the rural training stream uh, is prioritized places for mostly rural applicants. And uh, this is where, similar to what we had with the Flinders program, where you have to show dedication to working in a rural community, Unimelb have the same thing. They wanna see dedication to working in a rural community long-term, not just, I wanna make use of like an easier way to get into medical school or else you just won't get it. What they do in this is you'll have to submit an additional document in your GEMSAS application. And that will be a written application that demonstrates why you have a strong connection to rural or regional Victoria, and then also why you're committed to working in that part of the country as well. In that as well, you also have to commit to your third and fourth years of the four year degree, which are the clinical years, are spent in a rural setting as well. So that would mean a move to rural to rural Victoria. And then indigenous applicants as well, there's also ind an indigenous stream. Up to 5% of the domestic places could be reserved for indigenous applicants. It's pretty much the exact same as the UniMelbs process, where effectively, if you're applying direct to the uni, you don't have to give a GAMSAT score. If you're applying through GEMSAS, then you do have to provide a GAMSAT score and the minimum 50s apply in that case. Then with interviews, obviously once all of that goes through, they use a 50-50 weighting for interview offers. So 50-50 weighting between your GPA and your GAMSAT score, along with the bonuses applied. They rank everyone, they then give uh, interview offers. They say that they gave up to about 220 interviews for the 138 places for 2022 entry. So a little bit less than double. Uh, we normally see this kind of around about 100% increase on final intake. Uh, so they roughly double their interview numbers and then cut down it in around about half or so. They use a, a multiple mini interview phase. They do 10 multi mini interviews of five minutes each. Unimelb did eight, so it's slightly longer at Deakin. Uh, assessing effectively the same things. Again, I'm not a huge expert on interviews or anything, so I won't go into a huge amount of detail there. Finally, offers the offers process is pretty much stock standard, exactly the same, right? So if you're in your final year and finishing off your degree and you're, you are successful in your offer, uh, then you'll be given a conditional offer. Your GPA is not allowed to drop by more than 0.4 from your application by the end of your degree. So if you had a 6.7, it just means that by the end of the year, it's not allowed to be lower than a 6.3. That's pretty much it. And if you've only got one semester to go, you've had a competitive enough GPA to get in for an offer. Chances are this won't be very likely to have that big of a drop. But uh, if maybe you're scraping in on a higher G GAMSAT and a lower GPA, this could be a consideration to look out for. So don't, uh, don't let off the accelerator, so to speak, in the final semester. If you've already finished your degree and you've applied and been given an offer, that's a firm offer. You can accept it. There's, it can't be taken away from you effectively. In terms of how they actually allocate offers, same as UniMelb, 25, 25, 50 weighting. So 25% GAMSAT, 25% GPA, 50% MMI performance. And then they rank everyone and then offer up the spots. They offer up CSPs first, then bonded um, and international are ranked separately but bonded are always uh, given after CSP. So the strongest applicants will be selected for a CSP place. And there we go, that's the whole process for Deakin. So there's not really a huge amount of difference at Deakin. It's pretty much just the GEMSAS process. The only thing they do really differently is their bonus scheme. So hopefully this was all helpful to break it all down and uh, let me know in the comments if you're gonna be applying to Deakin. And uh, yeah, I might uh, see you there or I might see you at another uni or I might not see you at all because maybe I don't get in, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to see you in, in the next one.